Glory. Glory. Are you refreshed? Glory. Yes. Warriors of the Most High, third dimensional warriors. I have a message from the Lord this morning. <laughs> Don't go to Nivea. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. God, is it hot in here? Whew. Is anybody else hot? Hey, Amen. You're all hot, right? Glory. Should be on zero. <laughs> Thank you, Master. <laughs> He's so cool. Ezekiel 47, please. As I was praying this morning, I had a couple of visions by the Lord. And uh, one of them, he, I, I began to see uh, life streams. Life streams. Everyone say life streams. There are life streams of God. Worship is a life stream of God. His word keeps us in the life streams. God's will is a life stream. But there's something connected to his will. It's called time. Because if it's not God's time, it's not God's will. And if it's not God's will, it's not God's time. Amen? Time is a life stream of God. There's a life stream of the flesh and there's a life stream of the spirit. And in the life streams, one of the things the enemy tries to do is either get us out of the life stream, back into the life stream of the flesh. And as I began to, he began to bring these scriptures to me, he showed me a river. And he said, the river is my life stream. So when you see the word river, when you see about the river in the, bio, in the word, he's talking about life stream. It's his life. There's only a certain amount of life streams of God that he wants us to be in. Anything else is a life stream of the flesh or the carnal, or actually the end result is death. In Ezekiel 47, let's read it together, starting in verse 1. Now he brought the prophet Ezekiel, he said, Then he brought me back to the door of the what? Temple of who? God, right? And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For in front of the temple faced east, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate, and led me around on the other side to the outer gateway that faces the east, and there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, the water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. Now, I want you to look at this. This is the tabernacle. Boom, 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 boom. Amen? That's how we cross over. In verse 6, 
He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows toward the east region, goes into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are what? Healed. And all, and it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river, rivers go will what? Live. This is called life stream. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these water these waters go there for they will be healed everything will live wherever the river goes it shall be that the fishermen will stand by it from Engadi to Engalam they will be places for spreading their nets their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea exceedingly many but its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. Although the bank of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from where? The sanctuary. Hello. The tabernacle. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for what? Medicine. Wow. It is a river stream from the throne of God. It's a life stream from God for his followers. It's symbolic. It's a parallel to his will and time. In other words, everything is associated with his time and his will. Amen. If you're not in the life stream, you're not in... The area of life. And Revelation 22. Oh, hallelujah. So we know rivers are life streams of God. Well, when we worship, that is a life stream of God. <clears throat> Revelation 22, starting at verse 1. And he showed me a what? Pure river of water of life. A pure river. Uncontaminated. Clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets and either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of, of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives light to them. And they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. He said, Behold, I am coming quickly. I, I, I Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard, I saw and fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to each one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last of time. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs, sorcerers, and sexual immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, 
And whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Again, the river of life is the life stream of God. Obedience to his word and spiritual leading keeps us in the life stream of God. And there are many benefits, there are rewards besides eternal life. Again, one of the ploys of the enemy is to get us out of the life stream. Because there are fake life streams. That's what the enemy does. He has a deceptive life stream. He tries to get us to manipulate our will. Amen. Because if he can manipulate our will, he can manipulate time. And time is God's. There's a time. It's just God's life stream. His will is God's life stream. Job 14. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job 14, Job 14, the employment section of the Bible. In verse 12. Everybody there? Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Let's read it. So man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. They will not awake nor be roused from their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in the what? Grave. That you would conceal me until your wrath is past. That you would appoint me a set time and remember me. Wow. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days are of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. You shall call and I will answer you. You shall desire the work of your hands, for now you number my steps. But do not watch over my sin. My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and you cover my iniquity. Again, Job is saying something very powerful. You know, again, God's will is God's time. Amen? All right. All memory, he says, is attached to a segment of time. So we have, because remember, we live a life of memory. Every bit of your memory is attached to a segment of time. Now, what is time? Time is a continued sequence of existence and events. That occurs in an apparently irreversible succession from past to present into future. It's connected in the material reality. <laughs> what is time? It's continued sequence of existence and events. That occurs in an apparently irreversible succession. In other words, you can't reverse time, can you? Only God can. From the past to the present and to the future. It is connected in a material reality. Only the Word of God can allow us into the life stream of time by obedience of His leading and Word. To the obedience of his leading and his word. Remember God's time is God's will. God's will is God's time. All time. Remember every memory is an attached to a segment of time. Place time. And Ecclesiastes 3.
Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted. A time to what? Kill. A time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift of God. By staying in the life stream of God, all things are going to work to the good. Again, we want to avoid falling out of God's time. Does everybody, because they will interfere with the life stream. And I, and I don't think people understand that enough. Because God's will is God's time. God's will is a life stream. You and I must avoid every false life stream and getting pushed out of the life streams of God. The enemy comes to do what? Push. Holy Spirit leads. Psalm 127. In verse 1 and 2, what does it say? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to stay up late, sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Many people are building the house, their foundations in vain. Because they're building it in the flesh. God's trying to, you cannot build the house of God without living in the life stream. In Jeremiah 17. In verse 1 and 2, what does it say? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to stay up late, sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Many people are building the house, their foundations in vain because they're building it in the flesh. God's trying to, you cannot build the house of God without living in the life stream. In Jeremiah 17. So we know that there's actually two timelines and also because there's the timeline of the flesh and there's the timeline of the spirit. That's why the word says, be anxious for nothing. Amen? Because it'll move you right out of the life streams of God. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Thus says the Lord, Curse is the man who trusts in himself. Hello. And makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. He shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes. Does everybody see that? They, they're going to miss when God's trying to do something or rescue them also. 
but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. You know, many people say, I trust the Lord, but they still do their own will. They're out of God's time. Oh, I trust God. You can tell by anxiousness, fear, or what their desire is. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, hello, which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes, hello, when attacks come. But its leaf will be green and will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the thoughts of man. Every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Again, there's a river. There's a spiritual river of life. And there's a spiritual, uh, uh, a false river of death. There's a timeline of the flesh and there's a timeline of the spirit. And one of the things that we don't want to do is, do is be distracted or be removed. So this is, why is the Spirit giving us this? Because He wants us to discern life streams of Him. He wants us to discern not to step in certain things that are not His life streams. See, if it's not producing life, it's promoting, promo producing death. Amen? Certain things that promote life and promote death. God's time is life. Man's time is death. Romans 8, 12, let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of... So we want to be obedient to God's leading. Not flesh leading, not emotional leading. Not past leading. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of what? A bondage again to what? Fear. Fear moves people right out of the life stream. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. To be led by the Spirit, with the spiritual leadings, we must have a secure foundation in the life stream of God. Avoiding contamination to His time or interruption by forces of evil and desire of the flesh. I'll say it again. We must have a secure foundation in the life streams of God. Avoiding contamination to his time. Or interruption by forces of evil and desires of the flesh which move us out of God's time. <clears throat> There's a parallel to this. He called a soil. In Matthew 13. Matthew 13 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Life streams of God. We're to know them. What keeps us in the life streams of God? His word and obedience to the leading of his spirit. Amen? What's the two things that keep us in position? To seek and to sow. 
Verse 18, therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed on a wayside. But he who received the seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and prosecution, persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles, gets anxious. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. This is where people overwork. 23, but he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Again, the foundation here is considered soil. Soil is what produces seed. Amen. The seeds come forth and they grow. The foundation is soil of time connected to the life stream of God. Remember, everything is connected in the area of God's will, God's time, and time, emotion, uh, uh, um, people's memories are all attached to a sequence of time. In Galatians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? I didn't lose anybody. It's okay. I was about lost when it was given to me. And then the Holy Spirit gave me all this other information and so forth. I'm like, what? I had a, the second vision came and it was very powerful to me. And it was a stream. It was flowing. It was there was a stream of like a, a river, a stream, and then there was wind. So the stream was lower and the wind was higher. And it was blowing strong, moving strong. And I saw the Lord standing there. And he was standing over the stream and the wind was blowing and, and his garments were blowing and his hair was blowing. And he was catching something in his hand. And both hands. And I saw him catching these things. And I'm like, Lord, what are you catching? He said, I'm catching lost time. I'm the catcher of lost time if you allow me. And he began to take it and then he, he put it together. And he put it somewhere. I don't know where he put it. But all of a sudden it was like, okay. I'm the catcher of lost time. And man, his hands were just, it was so powerful. And there he was, and he was catching. I'm like, what are you catching? Lost time. Lost time. See, when I was in prison and I came out, I wanted to catch up. Because I had lost time. It didn't work. When I was in the world B.C., it was like being in prison because I was in bondage. But when I got saved, I wanted to catch up because to me, my whole life was lost time. And that's when the Lord appeared to me way then. And he said, what can you do that I can't? That's when he started sharing with me, exchanging, casting cares, exchanging things. And it's like, don't interfere with my time. Don't think that you can move my hand to your time. It ain't going to work. Because then we labor in flesh, in vain. In Galatians 2 verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I what? Destroyed. 
In other words, things have passed. I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Again, many times we want to build on lost time and memories trying to catch up time. Provoked by forces of corruption, removing individuals from the life stream of God and the stream of the flesh and carnality. He stands in the flow of all time. And he catches our, all of our lost time and resets lost time by purifying it to be restored in the life stream of his time with no loss. So what he does is when he takes our lost time, he puts it together and he puts it and it gets purified. He's working something. When it gets purified, he puts it back into the life stream. And eventually, it comes. And then he fixes it. He changes it, not us. Why? Because if we try to do it, what happens? We get kicked out of the life stream. And Psalm 94. Life streams of God. See, we have to look at our, we have to ask ourselves, am I in the life stream of God? And whatever we're doing, am I in the life stream? Psalm 94. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? In verse 1. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger. And murder the fatherless. That means the unborn. Yet they say the Lord does not see. Nor does the God of Jacob understand. Understand you senseless among the people. And you fools. When will you be wise? He who planted the ear shall he not hear? He who formed the eye shall he not see? He who instructs the nations shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge. The Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your word or your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment will return to righteousness, and all the up and right and heart will what? Will follow it. Powerful. Psalm 31. God's going to cut off the wicked. You and I are going to, we're going to start to see it here. It's beginning to unfold right now. He's heard the prayers. Believe me, he's bombarded with prayers. Hallelujah. Psalm 31 verse 14. Life streams of God. How many of y'all know prayer is a life stream of God? <laughs> in verse 14, let's speak it together. For as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times, hello, my times are in your hand. If my time is in his hand, is my will in his hand? Yes. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. 
Make your face shine upon your servants and save me for your mercy's sake. Do not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed and let him be silent in the grave. Let the lion lips be put to silence which speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you. The fear of the Lord will keep you in a life stream. Which you have prepared for those who trust in you. In the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in the strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter 4. Hallelujah. So whose responsibility to know if you're in the live stream of God? Ours. So when we gather together, we come and worship, or we're in God's live stream. Now think about what the enemy has succeeded in, preventing people to gather. See, they have been planning this. They've been getting, they're pulling people out of the live stream of God. And they're preventing people to get in the live stream of God. With false doctrines. With lies. With emotional desires. Fears. It's happening every day. People are in and out. Of that river of life stream. Remember. You don't want to die out of that life stream. Amen. In verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same thoughts of him. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. Hello, do you see the two times, two timelines? For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And regarding these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They're just trying to get you in the flesh. In regard to these, um, they will give what? Account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to it with one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability with God supplies. With God supplies, not with flesh supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Life streams of God. So Holy Spirit, we just ask today that you'll give us the discernment so we can avoid any contamination to the life stream of God, to ourselves, and avoid any deception or deceptive life streams that we would be able to see according to what you see, that you would guide us and protect us, Lord. And that we would live in the life stream all the way home. Because it is the eternal stream to your throne for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.